Hey guys, this is Alex Sutherland, and today I'm making a video on how to create your own custom games and drills in Simple Post Flop Standalone. And this was requested by a viewer here, um, Manic Many, so thank you for that request. And it's definitely something I wanted to help out with. So the idea is that in GTO Trainer, you know, you can use pre-built solutions, but you can also go to custom games and play games and drills that you create yourself. You can do a bunch of drilling, get summary stats, all that nice stuff. And what I want to answer today is how do you actually go about generating these solution files that you need to load into GTO Trainer to make it all happen using Simple Post Flop standalone. And in Simple Post Flop, there's going to be two options. So one is that if you purchase any preflop packs, they will come both with the preflop solutions, but then for any preflop solution, you can also go ahead and uh, click on it and click this download flops button. And that'll download all the flop solutions pre-solved to uh, super high accuracy. And you'll get uh, the number of flops shown here. So this one will have 74, or the 74 board subset, this will have the 184 board subset. There's 1,755 total possible flops, but there's not a lot of value in training separately on you know, four hearts, five hearts, six diamonds, and four hearts, six hearts, five diamonds. Um, a lot of those boards are going to play very, very similarly. And so usually some smaller subset is sufficient. Now, if you're not using preflop packs, if you want to design your own solutions, then you'll need to create them yourself. So the first step you do is you get one solution on a specific board set up just the way you want it. So you have to you know, choose your bet sizing, choose your pot size, choose your ranges, get that all set. You can go in and manually prune your game tree. So if I don't want to allow a flop donk, you just go ahead and delete that. Um, and once you have a game tree that you're really happy with, maybe I don't want to include this over bet shove, say, uh, edit the game trees you like, and then once you have a game tree you're happy with, you want to click this Generate Boards button. And this interface will let you choose which boards you want to include in your subset, and those will be all the possible boards that are available to you when you're drilling. So if you don't want to think about it too much, the easiest thing to do is to use one of the pre-built subsets. This is every possible board. These are smaller. And depending on the situation, you probably don't want to go too big here. If you're doing smaller scenarios like 3-bet pots um, or short stack situations, you, those solutions will run faster. If you're doing big, you know, single raise pot uh, cutoff versus big blind situations like I am here, each calculation will take, depending on your machine speed, maybe 10 minutes to run, 5 or 10. And you definitely don't want to be waiting for days to run them on every possible board. So I would recommend generally using the 2074 or the 184 board subset. You can, of course, also use their interface here to either generate random ones or generate specific ones as you like. Um, I'm not going to go into too much depth on that for now, and we'll just demo doing it with the 70 board sub 74 board subset. So once you've done that, you click Save, and you can generally leave this as default. Click OK, and then you need to click a folder that you want it to go to. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new folder. Well, you know, input boards for demo drill. Select the folder, and it will take a second or two to actually save. And it'll say 74 boards are saved when you're done. And those boards will now be available in that folder, but they're unsolved. So the next step is to actually solve them. So we go to standalone jobs. And here you can select an input folder. So I'm going to select the folder we just created. Then you select an output folder. This is where the solved boards will go. I'll make a new folder for that as well. And then you probably will want to mess with your calculation settings a little bit. So choose how many cores you want to use. My machine has eight. If I want to still be able to use it in the background and do other stuff, I might drop this to six. Um, we generally don't need any next tree info. We only will want to use flop compression if we don't have enough memory to run the solutions we're running naturally. The flop compression lets you run bigger solutions than you could without it, but it slows down the calculation. And then you'll need to choose a uh, you know, a calculation accuracy that you want, and then you are good to go. So I usually like to do a middle for my flop solutions, and then in GTO Trainer, I set the accuracy higher for the turns and rivers. So once that's done, you would click Run Calculate, 
and I'll just demo that here, but obviously I won't wait for them to solve right now. And it will just start chugging away at them one by one, and you'll see uh, this list update as you go. And then once they are all done, so I'll click stop here and show you what that might look like. <clears throat> once they're all done, you'll have a folder of solution files, and that's what you're going to need to import into GTO Trainer. So going over to the GTO Trainer side, how do we do this? You'll log in, you'll go to the Custom Games tab, and then you'll click Add to add a new custom game. And you can decide whether you want to drill. That's when you practice a specific decision point over and over, so like sea bettering or turn barreling or turn probing, one specific spot. Regular training would be that you pick a starting point and you play out the rest of the hand. So for now, I'll focus on a drill. And I'd give it a name. And uh, this won't involve any preflop play. We're doing postflop here. And then I would go here, and the folder that I want to pick is going to be the folder where my output boards went. Now, since we didn't actually solve these, I'm just going to go to a uh, existing thing I have and select this folder. And that's already full of solutions. So now we can click Next. And then what this will do is it will show me a scenario type, and it will show all the solution files that match that type. So there's a list of all my boards. I don't need to do anything over here. It's just to let you know that it correctly identified all of those scenarios. And then in the drill, I want to pick the node that I want to practice responding to, which is a little bit confusing. So if I want to practice c betting, I don't actually click on the c bet. I click on the check here, because I'm practicing what I'm going to do after my opponent checks. If I click on this, I'm going to be practicing responding to a CBET, so that'll be whether I call for folder raise. So I'm going to go ahead and say that we're making a uh, CBETing drill. Choose this node, click Save, and then we are good to go. And we will see our drill down here as demo drill, and I can play it. And as we can see, I'm in position. I have the ranges 28.42 and 24.26 that I chose over here in SPF, and I can bet away. So that is the basic workflow. One other thing to be aware of is that if you want to do turn and river drills, uh, you'll be able to choose the turn and river textures in GTO Trainer for every possible turn or river card that came on any of the flop boards you picked. So you don't necessarily need to run any more of uh, any new boards. Once you have the flop solution, you can use those flop solutions for turn river drills as you like. For turn drills, you will need to have you know simple post off standalone installed. And for all uh, custom games, you'll need to have the pro version of GTO Trainer. So I hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and I'm happy to answer. Thanks for watching.